where my personality shift had to change in order for me to tap into him and to get him better. Stay tuned and let's get into the video. When evaluating Milo, my mother-in-law's dog, the biggest thing I saw with him was he lacked confidence, and that's big, right? In order for your dog to become great with obedience and great with confidence, you have to work up and build that, right? And I noticed immediately when he started working with me and dealing with me was he wasn't used to being put in the structure and he wasn't used to having that kind of alpha personality, you know, training him. And the bigger issues became, well, how do I break this trust and how do I adapt? Because that's the key, right? How do you adapt your style to fit each dog, to help train them to make them become the best version of themselves, right? So I noticed immediately I had to focus more on building the bond, building the trust, having them grow confident in me, and then we'll work our way up, right? So what I started doing was I started walking him around the house and I started having him grow comfortable with me and I started leaving him on the leash and yes, we had some issues, just like anything else. Sometimes the dog doesn't trust you, they won't come to you. Sometimes they don't wanna follow the reward, but it's all, a virtue of patience. How do I get this dog to come to me? How do I have my energy at the right level for that dog to gravitate to me, right? So I started giving him the high pitched voice and then before you know it, he started growing comfortable with me and he started walking with me. Then before you know it, we were teaching him sit. And then from that, we started doing the Milo come call, but it wasn't with any distance. It was just a short amount of distance and just slowly building and building and building. Once I was able to find what he really, really liked and what he really, really loved, that's when I was able to really help him. So the bigger issues we had with him, he was pulling while walking with my mother-in-law. He was resource guarding, which we needed to get that out of him and have him grow comfortable and have him grow confident while having somebody else pet him while he has something in his mouth because if not, he would get very snappy and sometimes you have to correct that and there's nothing, uh, oh, it's okay, boy, that that can do. You actually would have to correct them. So while also doing this, you're providing the corrections, correct? But on top of that, your energy has to fit what the dog will gravitate to because if the dog doesn't trust you and you don't grow trust, you can't train the dog, right? So. I've had him now for, I'd say, three days, and he has done a drastic improvement. He's outside, staying by me on the leash. He's learned the sit command. He's learned the come command. The next thing we're working on is structured right now, right? And then from there, it was just more so, how do I build the confidence? How do I get him to walk with goals and stay right by me and have them both gravitate and just, you know, be a better version of themselves? And it was great to have the opportunity to train him and we're just going to be showing you from day one up until he leaves just the improvements of what he was able to do, confidence and him just to grow comfortable with us. Notice when I'm teaching him how to sit, you see I have the food reward right by me in my hand and I'm picking it up on his nose and I'm saying sit. So basically what this is doing is this is programming him to take that seated position. Every time he takes that seated position, I mark it with good boy chip, and I give him the reward chip is the command for the reward. Every time I say that, he knows he's going to get a reward, right? And every time he does the behavior that I want, like when I tell him Milo come, and he starts coming to me for the reward, and then I tell him Milo sit, and he sits, then I tell him Milo front, he looks right at me, chip, go -hoo, go -hoo. give him high praise, because that's what we want, right? We want him to go comfortable with, you know, the structure that we have him in, because before you have to understand what the differences are, right? Milo was coming from a house where he could do whatever he want, whenever he wanted. He's not used to being in this structured environment. So my goal was, well, how do I make him better? How do I have him acclimate to our structure? And you know, it was a little bit of a pain first, but he ended up coming along. Now what you're seeing is the focal point being food learning, because I understand that he's hungry. He wants the reward. Once I was able to find what he really, really liked, that's when I was able to get him to follow the reward and start learning certain behaviors. And on top of that, what I also did was once I was able to teach him sit, once I was able to teach him the command of come, after that was when I started incorporating ghost around him, where he could grow confident because Milo, when you look at him, it's a very submissive dog. As soon as he met Ghost, he went right on his back and tried to play possum. It was the um, funniest thing, but you could definitely tell that he was nervous, he was scared. So, like I said, it's my job right at this point to help him grow confident with being around Ghost and having them walk by me, right? That was my end goal. That was my goal at the end of it, right? Have them both walk by me, have them be firm and good so I can take them outside and they'll be good. You know, it's funny how it works out because at first he wasn't like that. He didn't want to be around Ghost. He was petrified of him. But now when you start seeing him 
grow comfortable with me and grow comfortable with, with the house, he starts getting a little bit more confident, a little bit more comfortable, and we're able to start getting some speed from him, you know what I mean, when it comes to the obedience. And that's all part of the plan, right? My goal here is to give you the perfect structure to train your dogs in so that you could bring out the best of them and that you could become a pack leader. That's the biggest thing, right, at the end of the day, is understanding not to be a firm mom, not to be a fur dad, and as much as I But me being the alpha and the pack leader, where if I tell him to do something, he's gonna do it. Where he gravitates to me, where he wants to work for me. And that's the thing. My goal here is to teach you the balance, the line, so that you could become the better pack leader and so that you could become a better handler for your dog and so that you could have the best dog possible. <laughs> yes. Yes. Stop, sit. Good boy. So again, I'm waiting, respecting the boundary. His owner's in here. So the, close the door. Yeah, it is good boys. Good boys. Tits. Boy one. Hello. Up. Oh. Come on, come on, big guy. Good boys. Tits. Good boys. Chip. That's how we teach them the behaviors we want around the house. All right, everybody. So, in conclusion, in regards to training, I told you guys I was going to be documenting everything that I'm putting on this channel and showing you what I'm able to do. And I think it's big that, and now I understand it with, you know, seeing trainers and seeing them work and just reading up on it. It's just big that in order to get to where you wanna be, you have to adapt your style to fit multiple dogs. You just can't have one style. And that's the one thing I noticed. That was a big learning thing for me in this first one is just like seeing myself like, oh, I can't do the things I did with Ghost because he needs to be treated differently. And that's how we adapt, right? And that's everything in life. In order for you to stay relevant, in order for you to get to where you want to be, you have to adapt, you have to grow, you have to evolve, right? And I think that was the first evolution of me in doing what I'm doing now, so. <laughs> All right, everybody, so that wraps up the video. Hope that each and every single one of you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It helps us, and we truly appreciate all the support that we've gotten. Now, with that being said, I told you guys I was going to be covering a lot of things on this channel, and everything would be so widespread between showing you ghost life and just our dog's life in general, our lives, our development, my development within training and just dog training in general and just giving you tips and utilizing everything we can to help you become a better pack leader. And I hope you enjoy it. So we're up and out of here. That ends the video. We'll catch you on the next one.